know, these are the finer moments in life. Joe! The moments that I'm gonna miss. It seems like an eternity before you hit the age of 21. And then, blink an eye, 24. Can we do this? Then you're 26. Joe, can we do this already? 30's right around the corner. Joe! All right, let's do go. This. Let's see what you got. You up? Huh? Come on! Let's go, pussy. Let's go. Come on! One, two, three, four, five. Come on, you're never gonna break my record. Five, five. Oh! oh what a loser! You couldn't even beat Debbie. <laughs> hey, did you score any extra tickets to the game? Oh, I'm sorry, man. It's all sold out. I'm lucky I'm going, man. I heard the scalper's getting close to 500 bucks a ticket. I'll give you 25 bucks for yours. What'd I just say? Uh -oh. Why would I sell them to you for that? Because I love you, man. We're like this. Hey. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Dude, how long have we been partying, man? I think since noon. Dude, can you believe it? Graduates of 99, our team makes it to the final four! Yeah! 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 Dude, the game's not even for another two hours yet. You got the tickets right. What? <laughs> what? Warm er. What? Warm, warm, warm. Red hot. What? Oh. Will, you, will you make sure you keep those in a safe place, please? 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 Pizza and a half with the cardboard backing on it. At least when you take a shit, your ass will be automatically wiped clean. Ugh, do you even know half those people out there? I only know a few. I'm gonna put your purse in the cupboard. I want these tickets to disappear. Holy shit! What the hell is this for? My dad gave it to me to be safe. Oh, what, dad doesn't trust me now? Oh, no, he trusts you. I don't know if I can enough. Ah. Okay. Oh, this is not the room to be dizzy in. Well, you, you don't like my artwork now. Yeah. Maybe you should try and make yourself grow up. You'll probably feel better. Night is just beginning. What the f- 
fuck are you doing? Hey, what's up, man? Will you get the hell out of here? Come on, get the hell out of here, will you? Man, at least let me wipe my ass. Jesus. Can you believe this shit? God. <laughs> We've been through a lot, haven't we? <laughs> that we have. <laughs> How long have we been together now? Almost six years. Uh, I don't know how I would have got through this last year without you. Well, remember, you don't just have me, you've got my parents too. <laughs> My mom's already planning the wedding. <laughs> well, there's, there's still three months before graduation. I mean, that was the original plan, right? I mean, until we graduate before we start planning the wedding. Besides, it's only a piece of paper. We've practically been living together since my parents died anyway. I can't wait to have your last name. You need to make an honest woman of me. I'll go see if I can find something to settle your stomach, okay? Fuck! I missed the fucking game. Heavy? Heavy?
know. Hey, Carol, is Debbie home? Josh? Yeah, I was... I was wondering if Debbie was there. Good morning. We interrupt programming for this late-breaking story. We have reason to believe that John Wesley may be at large from his escape from prison last night. We will now go to a taped interview with Warden Prost that was filmed earlier this morning. We have confirmation that John Wesley was in his cell last night in lockdown. Uh, it appears that there's no forced entry anywhere from his cell or anywhere on the grounds. Uh, we believe that he's hiding somewhere in our correctional facility, but we want to take necessary precautions and advise not only the local authorities, but the viewing audience as well. As you may remember, John Wesley was convicted of the brutal attack on his fiance, Deborah O'Brien, that happened one year ago today. The crime took place at Wesley's home following the riots after the conference game. We will now go live to the house where the brutal murder took place, where field reporter Shelley Morley is standing by. Shelley. Good morning, Stacy. I'm standing in front of the house where this brutal crime took place. The house has been abandoned, but as you heard from Warden Prost, this house may soon have an occupant. John Wesley and Debbie O'Brien appear to be a happy, fun-loving couple. All that changed the night of March 27, 1999. After coming home from a night of partying and tailgating at the NCAA game, John repeatedly stabbed Debbie with a large kitchen knife. Many questions were left unanswered as to why John admitted openly to the crime without reason. Perhaps on the day of the anniversary, John has finally broken his catatonic state and not only has the answers for the victim's family, but for the viewers as well. John Wesley. There is no law enforcement here at this moment, but what there should be night? someone shortly. What's going on? <laughs> Grab him! Shit! We're going nationwide.
Officer, I want you to hang back, let forensics do its job, okay? Make sure nothing is disturbed. Hey, Steve. How you been? Hey, Corey. Hey. It's like we never left this place. I'm headed over to Joe Freeman's house. Let me know if anything comes up. Will do. Hey, 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 guys, hey, Corey, now this place is secure. Steve, I know you have a right to be here, but I have a serious problem with you being anywhere around this case. Hey! Son of a bitch! Deja vu. Yeah, well, Pierce, our guy's reliving the event. He's recreated everything to its final detail. Look at this, graffiti, furniture, even the damn food on the counters. This doesn't fit the mind of a single random act of violence. Yeah, and all this from a guy who was supposedly escaped from prison last night. Uh, it's actually bizarre, almost impossible that this guy's acting alone. So we're going to need all the help we can get on this one, fellas. To go through all this trouble and the anniversary, he's definitely planning something. Yeah, but what? Carol. I saw in the news something happened to something happened to Debbie. What's what's wrong? Carol, I don't understand. What's going on? Where's Debbie? This is hitting too close to home. I can't do that. Look, we cannot have another incident we. like that's right, we. Now this comes from the top. It's in top priority. 
Now, the mayor called the chief. The chief just left my office. Incidentally, if you see a little brown asshole rolling around in here, it's mine, because the chief just tore me a new one. Now, I'm asking you, get your wife and go on vacation. No way. No? No. No. I said no. OK, well, then I have no choice but to suspend you, officer, pending psych evaluation. Now, give me your gun and shield. What the fuck do you think I've been doing the past 10 months? No way. I have a clean bill of health. Steve. You reinstated me yourself. Steve. I haven't done a damn thing wrong. This is my family we're talking about. You haven't realized I'm the victim here. Look, detective, I don't want you anywhere around this case. Now, you take your family, go to California, visit relatives. I've already given you two choices too many. I'm not going anywhere. Look, this topic is closed for discussion. Now, don't buck me on this one. I have your ass busted so low, the goddamn Cub Scouts will be telling you what to do. Now, give me your shield, damn it. Look. Look, Steve. Now you stay away from this case. And we'll get this guy. and reloaded after I left the firing range. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. Just like before, day by day. Well, it's not good enough. What do you want me to say? Same thing you've said all year. Nothing. Don't fucking start with me, Carol. Not now. Or what? You might actually grow some balls and finish what you should have put an end to in the beginning? What are you doing to me? Don't you understand that I'm at my breaking point? What do you want me to say? How good it felt when I smashed his head in? Yeah, I might actually get some pleasure out of that. I am sick and tired of hearing how much you hurt inside. I lost her too! You know, for a split second there, when I had that gun to his head, I felt this sudden rush of relief. Watching him die would finally put an end to all this anger and hatred that keeps eating my soul every single day. Please, Carol, don't. It's okay for me to carry the pain for both of us, but when I need to unload a little of it, you're too over the edge or too stressed out to handle it. I know this pain will never completely go away, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna keep reliving her death through your eyes. I'm trying really hard to come up with what's right. You better figure out quick what you're gonna do.
Drop the noise. What the fuck are you doing? Your neighbors called. They heard a fight going on. Fight? I was acting out a scene from my book. You know, man, this is starting to border on harassment. Didn't I cooperate enough with you this morning? Huh? Didn't I answer all your questions? What's this? I cut myself packing. Where are you cut at? I think I've answered all the questions I'm going to tonight. Either take me in so I can get my lawyer or leave me the fuck alone, you hear me? I am done cooperating. Don't you guys are for that? Just make sure you call me to contact you. Remember, your life could be in danger. still doing here? Thought I'd stick around for a bit, keep an eye out for you till I head over to Wesley's house. How you guys holding up? Same as before. I need a drink. Understand. The, the last thing I remember was the party last night. It, it, passing out in the bathroom with Debbie. I woke up this morning in the bathtub. 
There's a news crew out in front of us saying I killed her. You realize I hold all the cards here. I could pull this trigger and blow your brains out. Not only would I be a hero, but I'd have the perfect ending to my book. How the fuck can you talk to me like that? We've been best friends for how many years? Man, things change when you see your best friend butcher some. No, no, I don't believe that. There's no way I would hurt her. If you don't believe me, then pull the trigger, all right? Do it! Why not? I sound like you, I'm not a killer. I saw you with my own eyes. Your face. Blood. Her screaming. I'll never forget it. Start at the beginning. You think you know someone? You trust them, invite them into your home, into your life. Six years is a long time. You think that would be long enough to know everything there is to know about a person? Hell, I've known my wife 22 years. And one night you finish having dinner and realize there wasn't one word uttered throughout the entire meal. It's as if you were sitting next to a complete stranger. We've been partners for, what, two years? You're close to all that I have left as family. I would like to think that I know and trust you and that you can feel the same way towards me. Steve, you know you can trust me. That's why I'm gonna need you to pull the trigger. You don't understand what it's like to lose someone close to you. To look at the person who took away the one thing that meant everything to you. And you think that by killing him, it's gonna release all this pain? Then you and Carol can magically save your marriage and go on with your life? It would be a start. You're losing sight of what he did to Debbie. <laughs> he stabbed her 33 times. There was no chance for her to survive. If my life were in jeopardy, as a partner, as a friend, you would not shoot? Of course I would. That's all I'm asking. Oh, shit. You think they came down hard on you before? Just think what they'll do now. You are suspended, remember? And don't think the captain will stand up for us this time. There are too many eyes. This is nationwide coverage. Trust me. It'll be a clean shot. <clears throat> Excuse me, gentlemen. You know, this isn't good. We got an escape killer on the loose, and our city's finest is here getting drunk. You suspended me, remember? I wasn't talking to you! Hey, hey, we're just blowing off some steam. That's all. Look, when exactly did we stop being friends? I don't know. Things change. Yeah, things change. Look, I'm truly sorry for what happened, and I know nothing good is going to come from this. 
So I'm going to reiterate what I asked you this afternoon. Would you please take Carol and leave? Don't worry. We're going to be okay. Steve pull you into his vendetta. I'm already pulled in. You mean you told him you were there the night of the murder? No. I have to relive that night over and over in my mind, knowing that somehow I could have stopped Debbie's death. But I can't have Steve looking at me thinking the same thing. Look, I know John fucked up. Yeah. It was that one moment in time that we're all faced with, where we don't stop and think about the consequences of our actions. In a matter of seconds, in drunken rage, he grabs a knife off the counter and stabs her, not even conscious as to what he's doing. Does that make you a murderer? To kill someone, to murder someone, it's all the same. That person is dead. Damn it. In the split second when that happens, you can't take it back. It's done. But we're police officers. We took an oath to serve and to protect. It's our job to apprehend. It's the criminal justice system's job to punish. Ability to murder someone, now that's in the blood. You can't change it. I only pray that we get Wesley into custody before Steve gets his hands on him. Because if that happens, my friend, we're going to lose a good detective. And I'm not about to let that happen. And we still have our original agreement. Debbie started to feel sick, so he took her into the bathroom. Things were going fine up until that point. I don't know what the hell happened in there, man, but when you came out, you were a different person. I'd seen your temper before, but I'd never seen it go that far before. Not like that. The more you drank, the more violent you became. He tried to calm me down, he jumped over my shit. So, we dragged Debbie to the game. She started to sober up, but not you, man. You just kept drinking. I was at the game? Yeah. Actually, your ticket stub was the only thing you had in your pocket when they arrested you. That's where most of the tempers flared. Sitting that close to each other for hours. You know, you had no space to cool off, and Debbie wouldn't let any of your comments slide. What were we arguing about? It begins, but you can vividly remember how it ends. I don't remember the specifics. You want to fight anyone and everyone. Debbie was just your punching bag. You're pissed someone graffitied over your artwork. You even accused Debbie of sleeping around with Corey. 
Anything you ever wanted to bitch about came out that night. Hell, you even accused her of killing your parents. What? Yeah, you basically told her she was the cause of your parents' death. I love this place. I mean, think of all the people that have come here over the years to carve their poems on these rocks. Almost makes their love timeless. It's peaceful. Back in the 50s, there used to be a park surrounding this whole center area. Couples would come down and picnic by the river. Where did you find this place? My parents used to bring me here when I was a kid. You know, we, um... Still haven't talked about it, John. I didn't feel it was necessary. I need to know how you're feeling, John. I can't stop having nightmares about it. This is why I didn't want to talk about it. I was driving the car. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. The road was slippery. It's an accident. Just thank God I didn't lose you, too. Besides, you were so drunk that night, you weren't making much sense to anybody. Well, then what happened? We got back to the house. She almost stayed outside while you two fought inside. I didn't go into the house until I heard Debbie screaming. Forget that look on your face. When was the last time I looked in your eyes? So won the game. Because I don't believe any of this shit. How did I wake up this morning in the exact same place I remember? We're in the exact same clothes? But now it's supposed to be a year into the future with some heavy shit that I think I re would have recalled, you know? I mean, I just came from my house this morning. How could all the same stuff be there if this happened a year ago? Huh? Listen, listen. When you got life in prison, everything went through probate. That house you bought outright with the money that your parents left you went to the state. You didn't have any beneficiaries, so I picked up a little stuff you had. You know, a TV, a bed, kitchen table. The couch that Debbie was killed on, they hauled it off to the dump. I sat on that couch this morning. Did you notice the blood stains? It's fucking corn syrup and red dye. I restaged everything. House was empty, so I fixed it up for the pictures in my book. The hardest part was matching the couch, but since you got it at Sofa Plush, they're a dime a dozen. 
Your house was listed on the market for 10 months, but there was no chance of any buyers, man. This town's too small. You know, no one wanted to live there. So, I took down a for sale sign, scattered a few bottles, sprayed a little paint, put back in the TV and the sofa and the kitchen table. Here just like it was, man. It's kind of eerie. All that for your book. Hey, let's not go down the path of righteousness here, man. Remember, you killed Debbie. No, I don't fucking remember. Okay. So how did I get out of prison then? I don't know how you pulled that one off, man. I've been talking to the goddamn detective about it all morning. You know, if it weren't for my publisher backing up my story, I bet you I'd be in jail right now. I'm surprised they haven't picked you up, man. You've been sitting out there all day. You'd probably be safer off in prison. You know, if Steve gets a hold of you again, oh, this isn't happening. That's a week after Steve got a hold of you. Beat you so bad you took nearly 30 stitches across the skull. Nearly cost him his job. He was actually just reinstated a month ago. <laughs> this story just keeps getting better and better. trial huh I mean, why didn't they declare me insane this is fucking amazing you really don't remember this is gonna fuck my conclusion all to hell man what you got is a type of dissociative disorder see Freud said that our memories are self-censored and protect our self-concepts you had amnesia you can experience a sudden loss of memory. Uh, it happens in situations of extreme intolerable stress, or, or in your case, drinking too much. You know, uh, your conscious awareness becomes dissociated or separated from thoughts and feelings, which changes into another identity. The alcohol made you black out, man. You know, it, and you lost control of your mind. And when you when the alcohol wore off and you woke up, you you were conscious of what you did. Now at the trial, you were you were coherent, but a state of depression and that, that helped convict you, man. They gave you life. You know, and somehow you managed to escape and, and you got back to the house and you found it in the exact same way as you left it, you know? And your mind's saying, no, oh, man, man, it, it never, never happened. It never happened, you know, to compensate for your pain. Talk to me, man. It's starting to scare me. If my mind blocks out everything that's happened over the last year, then the slightest emotion could trigger it all back, right? Yeah. Don't you think it would have happened by now? I guess it all depends on how bad you want to remember. It's all in there. You just haven't found the right cue yet.
search my mind and all I could think of is how much I love her. But what's more important? Your experiences or your memories of them? Where is she buried?
You got more paint on you than you did the walls. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I can become the world's first freestanding work of art. Love is timeless. Your special spot. Marriage is a gateway through time, right? Yes. That way, that way we can relive our happiest moments over and over. So, I took down a for sale sign, scattered a few bottles, sprayed a little paint, put back in the TV and the sofa and the kitchen table. And voila, it appeared just like it was, man. It was kind of eerie. Tougher than a witch's titty. <laughs> it would help if you took the cardboard off before you cooked it. Well, why would Joe recreate that? I restaged everything. House was empty, so I fixed it up for the pictures in my book. Did you notice the blood stains? It's fucking corn syrup and red dye. Hey, did you score any extra tickets to the game? Sorry, man, they're all sold out. I'm lucky I'm going. You know, I heard a scopper's getting close to 500 bucks a ticket. Oh, was that the game? Yeah. Actually, your ticket stub was the only thing you had in your pocket when they arrested you. I'm gonna put your purse in the cupboard. I want these tickets to disappear.
how we doing this evening? Steve, today's been a really strange day, man. Oh, shit. I don't know how to explain it. I know everyone thinks I killed Debbie, Thanks. but... Thanks! <laughs> Joe didn't recreate this. How can everything in the house be exactly as it was? Some of this shit is in his apartment right now. There are things Joe wouldn't create that, that, that he couldn't create. I, I didn't do that. Look, nothing is what it looks like. You gotta believe me. I, I can prove Come it. Come on. You wanna take a shot at me? Or do you wanna stab me like you did my daughter? You want to recreate the past? Relive old fantasies? I'm right here. Will you just get off terrifying the women in my life? Steve, you know I wouldn't hurt you or your family. You know that. Make your move. Look at my face. Where's the scar? Huh? You're supposed to crack my head open. What was it, 30 stitches? Where is it? I would like to think it was 33. Take the fucking shot. This has all taken place before the game. This last year hasn't happened yet. If it didn't happen, why is Debbie dead? Take the fucking shot, Corey. Do it, Corey. I can change all this. I can change this future. Fine. I'll do it myself. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Hey, not without them cuffs. Ask all residents in the surrounding area to make sure all windows and screens are shut to avoid coming into contact with the smoke as it may contain harmful contaminants, being especially harmful for those who have asthma. Surprising revelation in the John Wesley story. It appears John Wesley never actually escaped from prison. He was found this morning in his cell. He had apparently been hiding somewhere inside the prison grounds. What the fuck you do that for? Come on, we gotta make it to the game. Whoa! What the hell happened here there? You must have been landed to a pretty good there to get those kinds of wounds. What the fuck you talking about? Debbie, I love you, Debbie. I'm like two inches, Debbie. Oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, you okay? Oh, I see. Dude, I swear your chest and leg, they were covered in blood, man. <laughs> oh, Lord, it's Mama, what did I drink? These marks on my skin. These marks on my skin. What the fuck is this shit, huh? You let people graffiti over my heart? Art? Fuck. Fuck. God damn it. Then I trust you, you to watch over my house and you let these assholes trash it? What the fuck is wrong with you? Mom, huh? Right, take it easy. Get your fucking hands off me. I Jesus! Sorry the party got out of control. Got out of control? What do you mean it got out of control, huh? Everything was fine five minutes ago. Minutes? You and Debbie have been in the bathroom for over an hour Bullshit. and a half. Bullshit! Yeah, poor Bill had to finish his shit outside. Oh, right, Bill? Shut the fuck up! Bill, you, fucking you okay? Oh, yeah. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. You need to stop playing big brother. <laughs> and you, huh? Why didn't you arrest the fucking assholes that did this, huh? Come on, huh? Come on. We just only got 20 minutes to get to the game, okay? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. All right. I don't know. I'm still really not feeling good. I don't think I'm gonna make it to the game. Oh, that's just fucking great! That's just fucking great!
She knew more than I could ever realize I seen her face a thousand times In these colorful dreams of mine Dancing dead at a show, singing softly and holding the rose. I couldn't just walk on by, I got to say hello. Letting goodbye since we get to the end of Cottonwood Pines. No one could hold me when there's nothing to hide. Up in the side. sense of comfort well, Have you ever tasted a dream Or felt the shining of a bright moon's beam Or sat alone by candlelight Stirring up shadows So fly like the wind Won't dance to leaves Or hide from sin The gypsy woman don't need a car She's walking on the sunshine And bar to bar And bar to star And star to bar And star to star sense of comfort